Now we're going to look at trig identities, and that just means you have an expression that, don't look at that side, it looks kind of complicated, but there are ways often to simplify it to something much, much better, much easier to read. Um, and in general, what we want to use when we're trying to get one side equal to another side, or just to simplify a trig expression, is to use the Pythagorean identity. So we want to use sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equal to 1. Okay. Now, I don't really have that in here. I have a sine squared, but here's a cosecant squared. Okay, so cosecant, we have to use, put it in terms of sine or cosine, and then see if we can get to this identity. So this is a little complicated. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So cosecant squared would be 1 over sine squared of theta. Now, you do not work back and forth. You only stay on one side. So I'm trying to determine, is that going to give me cosine over there as I work down through my problem? Now, I have a 1 over sine squared theta minus 1. And sometimes what happens is you'll need to get a common denominator, say, to write this 1 as sine squared over sine squared. I don't really need to do that this time, though because this whole parenthesis is multiplied by sine squared, so I'm going to distribute the sine squared through here. So if I do that, I'll multiply sine squared times the first expression, and then I'll multiply sine squared times 1. So I'll have sine squared times 1 over sine squared of theta gives me sine squared theta over sine squared theta, minus, multiply it times 1, So I have 1 minus sine squared theta. Well, if you look back up at your trig identity, if I take the sine squared and subtract it from the other side, I'll have 1 minus sine squared theta. So that is cosine squared of theta. And so I do have my identity. I did get this to equal the, right, the same side. So I worked with some complicated things in here, and ended up with two things that are equal, so this is a true identity. Let's look at a second one, um, just to see how we can simplify it or rewrite it in a different form. I want to just look at 1 plus tangent squared theta. 1 plus tangent squared. Well, here we go. Tangent is sine over cosine. So we'll go with the sine over cosine and see what we get. Tangent squared, then, would be sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And I don't know what I'm going to end up with. I'm just going to try to find something. 1 plus sine squared over cosine squared. Okay, this time I'm going to get a common denominator. I'm going to rewrite 1 as cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And sometimes when you're doing these, you just have to try something. You have a fraction, you have an integer, you add them together. And to add, you need a common denominator first. So let's do this. Now that I have my common denominator, I can just use that single denominator. And on top here, I have cosine squared pl theta plus sine squared theta. Ah, okay. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So this is the same as 1 over cosine squared theta. And what's 1 over cosine? 1 over cosine is secant. So this is actually equal to secant squared of theta. So I have an expression, and I have simplified or rewritten 1 plus tangent squared as secant squared. So you can actually think of this as an additional identity if you want to remember like we have the Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, or 
cosine squared plus sine squared, theta equals 1. You also have 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. So there, there are different problems that you may want to go ahead and memorize this if you want to, or you could just do this and come up with it every time. It doesn't make any difference because they're identities, and you can always find one when you've got the other one. This next lesson concerns double angle formulas and half angle formulas. Well, let's look at the double angle formulas first. And what that means is, for example, if I want to find the sine of 2 theta, I want to find the sine of twice an angle, and I already know the angle, that is equal to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So that I can use my original angle, and find the sine of the double angle. There's a formula for cosine. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And because of this just being cosine squared and sine squared, there are two other forms of it that you can get by using the Pythagorean identity. We know that cosine squared if you move the sine over, is 1 minus sine squared, so we replace that, we get a second formula. We know that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared, so you can replace that and get another formula. So these are the two for the double angle that you really need to memorize. Um, after this, you could use the other ones and find them if you need to. Let's look at more complicated, half-angle formulas. There are also two forms of that. The one that we use the most for sine and cosine, sine of theta over 2, the sine of the half-angle, is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. So it's one big fraction, 1 minus cosine theta over 2. So we're using cosine theta, and the result out here is the sine of half of that angle, whatever it is. Formula for the cosine of theta over 2, plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. So these two are very, very similar. There's a different form of this where you have sine of theta and inside is cosine 2 theta. But this is a form that we tend to use the most as far as the half angle formulas. So you can see all the other formulas in the lesson and memorize them the way you want to. Okay, let's, let's use this formula, this half angle formula. Suppose I'm given that the cosine of theta is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. And sometimes you'll be given sine and cosine. And um, in this case, it's going to be important that you know that the sine of theta is negative 1 over the square root of 2. Remember, this could be a positive or a negative. So with this information, we'll have to determine which quadrant our angle is in. And we're going to be limited to the first and fourth quadrants, but we're going to write them like this. The first and fourth quadrants, this goes up to pi over 2. And if you go all the way around, this would go from 3 pi over 2 up to 2 pi. But we're looking at the negative angles. So we're doing the first and fourth quadrants, but we're doing a positive basic angle, not basic angle, but positive angles in the first quadrant, and just negative of those same angles in the fourth quadrant. So that's how we're limiting ourselves. And when you look at your cosine and your sine, the cosine is positive, but the sine is negative. We are going to be in quadrant four. So our final answer has to match up with that, and that will help us choose if we have a plus or minus. And really, you can check it right now. If it's in the fourth quadrant, the sign has to be negative. 
we'll have to use the negative version. So this formula with the negative is what we have to use. So sine of theta over 2 is equal to a negative square root of 1 minus the cosine, which is 1 over square root of 2, all that over 2. Now you get this far, and being a math person, we have a fraction inside a fraction, and we don't really like that. Um, one thing you can do to kind of fix that is rewrite it a little bit. This 2 that's on the bottom here really means 1 half times it. So now I don't really have a fraction in a fraction. This looks a little bit better. I have a 1 half in front. Um, the other thing you can do is simplify, simplify, hmm. rewrite this by multiplying top and bottom by square root of 2. So you'd have square root of 2 times all this, square root of 2 times this, and that changes things. It now does not necessarily simplify it. I kind of like this, moving that half that's on the bottom in the front. Um, and there are other varieties of things that you see. It's just kind of a personal preference on algebraic forms where you leave your answer. Okay, let's do one with the double angle. In this problem, we want to find the sine of 2 theta, so we need to use a double angle formula. We're given that the cosine of theta is 2 thirds, and that theta is in quadrant 1. Now, if I want the sine of 2 theta, the formula sine 2 theta is equal to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Well, I have the cosine of theta. So that would be 2 times, and I don't know the sine of theta, and the cosine of theta is 2 thirds. So now I have to figure out how do I find the sine of theta? Pythagorean identity. I know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, and I know cosine. So cosine squared would be 2 thirds squared plus sine squared theta equals 1, so that my sine squared theta would be 1 minus, if I square this, I get 4 over 9. 4 over 9, okay. Common denominator, I have to combine those. Or you might just remember that 1 minus 4 ninths is 5 ninths. If not, you make this a 9 and put a 9 in the bottom. So we get 5 ninths as sine squared of theta. So the sine of theta is the square root of this. So if I take the square root of the whole fraction, I get square root of 5 over 3. But is it plus or is it minus? Hmm. Every time you take a square root yourself, you have to determine if it's positive or negative. Now, we were told quadrant 1, so if I'm in quadrant 1, my y values are positive and my x values are positive. Remember, x is like cosine, y is like sine, so if I want the sine, it will be positive. So this is the positive square root of 5 divided by 3. Don't forget to take the root of both top and bottom. So we put these together. 2 is like 2 over 1, so I'm just multiplying three fractions. 2 times root 5 times 2 would be 4 square root of 5 over 1 times 3 times 3 is 9. So my sine of 2 theta is 4 square root of 5 divided by 9. So I've used a double angle formula for sine and the Pythagorean identity. Sometimes it's necessary to actually solve equations for a variable. So here we want to find, I wrote theta up there, but it's really t. All values for t between 0 and 2 pi that satisfy this equation. Now this is not a trig identity, that's different. This is actually an equation that we can solve for a variable. And um, it might be easier to think about what we do with this if I take out the whole cosine of t thing and put in an x. 
to x squared minus x equals 1. And so this is what we have here because our cosine of t squared is really that, cosine squared of t. And so this is what we're looking at. And if you solve an equation like that, you have to pull the 1 over. The squares, to do a quadratic, you've got to have everything on one side equal to 0. So we'll do the same thing here. So I've got 2 cosine of t squared minus cosine of t minus 1 equals 0. And I'm keeping it cosine for a reason. I have to factor, oh, two parentheses. I have a 1, so I'm going to have the last term be a 1, and 1 is going to be positive and 1 negative to get that negative. My first term, I'm going to have to have a 2 cosine t times the cosine t, because cosine times cosine gives me cosine squared. Okay? And now I need to determine what's plus and what's minus. So if this is plus, let's see if that works, if this is a plus, I'll have 2 cosine t plus cosine t. No, that won't work. Make this one a minus. This one a plus. I'll have 2 cosine t minus cosine t. No, I had them backwards. I was right the first time. A negative 2 cosine t plus cosine t gives me a negative cosine t. You might want to try that part first in x's just to be sure you get it right. Now, this works the same as the x's. I have this times this equals 0, so that means 2 cosine t plus 1 can be 0, and cosine t minus 1 can be 0. Now, I'm going to solve this piece first because it just says cosine t equals 1. Oh, boy, 1. Okay, this is one of those angles that's on a quadrant because the cosine is equal to 1. So remember the angles on a quadrant. Right here, my point was 1, 0 for x squared plus y squared equals 1. Oh, and the 1 is what the cosine is, so that's at 0. So t is 0, but this says it could equal 0 and 2 pi, and so I do have both of those possibilities, 0 and 2 pi. Okay, well, let's look at this one. Got to solve for t, so I have 2 cosine t equals negative 1, I subtract, and then I divide, cosine of t is negative 1 half. Okay, well, this is one you know, you're supposed to know. The cosine, let's just think about if the cosine is a half. Cosine of t is a positive 1 half, okay? If I think about this, that is a 30 degree, that is a 60 degree angle, okay? This is 60 degrees or pi over 3 if the cosine is a half. But mine is a negative 1 half. So now we have to think back about the quadrant thing again. The cosine is a negative, so that means it's over here in one of these two quadrants, either the second quadrant or the third quadrant. So our cosine, our angle is there, but it is a pi over 3 angle. Pi over 3, let's see, that's a third of pi. So in the second quadrant, it would be actually 2 pi over 3. Pi would be 3 pi over 3. And then the one in this quadrant then would be 4 pi over 3. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. So I can't have pi because the cosine there would be negative 1. So it's these two angles. So my angle T is either 2 pi over 3 or 4 pi over 3. So what I now have are four possibilities. So my answer is that T could be 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 0, or 2 pi. And any of those four T values put in here for the angle will satisfy this equation.